So you know how everyone has those moments in their life that defines them, like whether it's an early memory or just kind of like a tragic event. For me, and it's gonna sound really spoiled, mine's Disney World. As a child, I was very fortunate, I guess, that I was quite spoiled. Um, after my mum had me and Louise and I became an only child and she couldn't have any more kids, I kind of got all the attention. So yeah, Florida, Villa, Disney World, it was pretty good. We had this really big villa. I think it has something like five bedrooms. But what I, it's most prominent in my mind of the place was how it had this big, like a, a, a glass greenhouse over the indoor pool. And the pool had these like fake rocks around it. And it was all this one depth. And like, I knew not to go into it because I wasn't the strongest swimmer. Um, but then there was a big archway behind it, which led to the kitchen. And I remember this really strongly because my parents were sitting in the kitchen at this time. It would have been the afternoon, probably about two. And they were stood there making food. And I was stood there just staring at the their blue covering. And I just looked them dead in the eyes and it was just a moment of, mum and dad, look at me, look what I can do. Something just compelled me to leap and run across it. Except I didn't run across it, I just sank like a rock. I just fell straight into it and it just started engulfing me. The plastic just sticks to you and it's warm and it's humid and you try and try to take these deep breaths and you just feel this deep pressure on your chest and your lungs. You can't breathe and at the same time it feels like your lungs should be filling with this water and there's just nothing. Well, I could taste and smell was that synthetic plastic blue. Um, well, they don't kind of, no one seems to talk about like drowning is when you go under, you can hear everything. And it's kind of like you're a world away, but you can still hear you can hear your heart just racing and you feel the sweat and you're kind of like boiling in this freezing cold coating. And then I could just feel and hear the heartbeat. And it's strange how it sits in your head that the dooms and just the, the thumping. And then eventually it just stops. Everything kind of warms up and you're just there. And then next thing I know, I'm at the hospital and it's surrounded by blue. And it was the same blue, the blue walls. Um, from what I gathered from the situation, I don't really remember the bit in between. Um, when my mum is a nurse, she must have revived me on the side of the pool. They did manage to get me out. When I came round, my dad had a lot of stitches in the side of his head. I'm assuming him being him wasn't as quick on his feet as he'd hoped to be. So as I was coming round, um, I heard my mum, like, hushing, I guess. It's the same sound you make for, like, wounded horses or animals. You just calm them with a... <laughs> Nothing really felt the same after that. Like, I woke up and it was um, 
Kind of like being in another body. And as I've got older, I've realized that is a sign of oxygen deprivation and I was dead for two minutes and three seconds. To be honest, the things um, started adding up the little bits. Like I couldn't, couldn't be near this, it's that blue. I just, it sounds stupid, but I, it was just everywhere. Like who has these bright blue synthetic looking cars? I would see like 10 of them in a day. Like, you know, like gray, silver, red, whatever. But this blue, it, <laughs> it's just me being a bit paranoid, I guess. <sighs> I'd wake up not scared, but kind of disorientated. And it was always at 2.03. And I know like you can get into these habits and stuff. It's like when you wake up just before your alarm goes off and that, but then I would just hear the, the, the hushing and I could just hear my mum again. And she's just, Even when I went to uni, like my dorm room was 203. And I can't be turning around to people going, oh, I can't stay there because, because like it's 203. Cause I don't want to be the weird girl. Um, and then there were stupid things like the songs. I would be singing a song and then it would be on the radio and I would literally turn it on. It would be in the exact same spot. And it's so stupid, but it's kind of like a glitch in the matrix. But then again, I thought maybe I'm just losing my mind and maybe I need to confront some past trauma that might help me. So I went to my mum's and my dad's. I asked him, I asked my mum, I said, oh, the 2001 holiday, um, where are the photos for it? So I asked her for these photos and she just laughed. But she didn't... She acted like she had no clue. She was like, what are you on about? We never went on holiday. I'm sat there like... Are you just going senile? Or... <laughs> and I... asked my dad. And... He says... Well, no, there was no Florida holiday. We booked it in 2001. But uh, the 9-11 attacks happened that day. We were supposed to fly at six o'clock in the evening. Um, and the first plane hit at 2.03 UK time, so we never went. We thought I'd lost it. So it got me thinking. It got me searching. I went through everything. I couldn't possibly be losing my fucking mind. I went through the photos. Nothing. But then there's this girl in a photo. She looks just like me. But she's not me. Because I'd never dye my hair fucking red. And there she is. With red hair. So that night, I stayed over, slept on the couch, didn't really feel comfortable sleeping upstairs in a, in a room that maybe isn't even mine. I chat to my mum on it and she's just like, oh no, you had red hair like when you were younger, blah, blah, blah. And not only have I now got this memory that isn't mine, I'm being told that there's this stuff that is mine and that I did that. I noticed something. It's very little, it's very minute. But she had a freckle. Here. I always remember it because I used to laugh when I was little and say, oh, it's your beauty spot because you're so beautiful. You know, like, when you look at twins and you get to know them so well that 
like they look identical but you can just tell and like when one walks in you just know who's who and that's the same with her could just tell that wasn't her try to bring it up into conversation try to bring up the red-haired girl in the picture they laughed and they're like of course you dyed your hair in school blah 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 I think I know what I did and sounds insane but I didn't fucking dye my hair so I try to chat to my dad the scar's gone he always had the scar, the scar from the holiday. And it's like the moment I bring this up, like the moment they know that I know about the holiday, everything starts changing. It's just, it was just too much. And I thought I would just let it go. Like that is the thing. I'm just thought I'm overthinking it and I'll let it go. And I left. So it brings us to the birthday. The big birthday bash. So as I said, my family's always, always been very close, family orientated, always with my cousins and my uncles and my aunts. And my mum's favorite thing in the world is my surprise birthday. Even as an adult, they still happen. I show up and I pretend to be surprised and it's just an excuse to get everyone together because my birthday is near no one else's. So I make the decision to go to the birthday. And I have this inkling that that's not my mum, that's not my dad, but I'm probably crazy. That's what I thought, at least. I tried really hard to just pretend like it was normal. You had Uncle Tom there who was like drunk off his face and you know what, it was only probably, what, quarter to two by that point? There was not really an excuse for it. <laughs> Uncle Tom was there like, oh, happy birthday! And like people, and I had my cousin who was just like, happy birthday! And then, then Alex came over and uh, he said, uh, he said, happy birthday, Louise. Oh, she, <laughs> she's been dead for years. It was fucking disrespectful and he sat there saying happy birthday Louise my fucking stillborn twin happy birthday Louise and then it's like everyone's staring at me whilst I'm getting fucking pissed off and and then mum's coming over and she's just doing the stupidness of hush hush it's the same sound and why is everyone saying Louise? And then it's just like, oh, but you look just so much like her. And it's just there. She walks through the door. It's, it's me, she walks. She walks through the door and everyone's there going, happy like, birthday surprise. Someone who looks like me. Someone who talks like me, who's smiling like me, but with this red hair. She's dead! She's been dead for years and it's just me walking through the door but with fucking red hair! And it just kind of made sense. This woman wasn't my mother. This man wasn't my dad. And then there's me. You know what? I just panicked. I realised this wasn't my reality. She shouldn't. She shouldn't be there because she is not a person and she does not exist. I snapped. Just ran at her. I 
just wrapped my hands around her neck and I just squeeze and I squeeze. It was just as fake as them. And I guess that's what brought me here. The moment they knew that I knew, that I knew about the pool, about everything, that I knew that this wasn't my fucking world, that this was not the place I was supposed to be and I don't know if it's the dreams or what leads me into this gateway. But that's what brings me here, Doctor. <laughs> yeah, I regret it. Should have held it together a little bit longer and um, maybe I could have got out of it, but <sighs> I guess this is how you replace me, just the same way you replace them.